So our, our, our research question really was, is the low back always the problem in low back pain? And this was really informed by empirical research that's been developing over the last 10 years. Eliason in 2008 did a, a study looking at 200 women with low back pain and 78% of them had pelvic floor dysfunction. If we look at Michelle Smith's study, which was done along with Paul Hodges, we all know who that is. Um, in 2006, they did this beautiful five-year longitudinal study looking at 38,050 women. I mean, that's a researcher's dream, especially in physiotherapy. That's a huge um, um, sample size, right? And one of the things that we used to say up until that point, because I've been doing physiotherapy for a long time, is that some of the strongest comorbid factors of low back pain were weight loss and inactivity. So, you know, sort of standard um, fare for women going to see their family doctor would get active and lose weight and your back will feel better. In fact, what this research study showed is that the two strongest comorbid factors of low back pain were actually pelvic floor dysfunction and respiratory dysfunction. Again, the top and bottom of that, that canister, that piston, right? Van Wingerden, so JP Van Wingerden did a nice study and actually uh, presented it at the Amsterdam First Abdominal Pelvic Pain Conference in 2013. It was a poster uh, presentation. As far as I know, this has not been published at this point. Um, and he works as part of Joe Nish's uh, group. Again, it was a big study. They did 1,636 patients, and they looked at the presence of pelvic floor dysfunction in pelvic girdle pain and low back pain in both men and women. So we actually used um, their study protocol as far as identifying pelvic girdle pain and low back pain in our study as well that I'm gonna to talk to you about in a moment. But what they showed is that two-thirds of women with pelvic girdle pain had pelvic floor dysfunction, and about 60% of women who had combined low back pain and pelvic girdle pain had pelvic floor dysfunction. And about one-third of men, right? So this is not just a female problem. Now in our study, we just looked at women at this point, so we're not gonna to talk too much further about men, um, but this was sort of the basis of, of why we decided to look at this further. Now in all of these studies that I'm talking about here, they measured pelvic floor dysfunction by giving patients a screening questionnaire. Do you have urinary continence? Do you have fecal incontinence? Do you have pain with intercourse? Do you have pelvic organ prolapse? But to, the point, to this point, no one has actually done an internal exam on these women to see what their pelvic floors actually were doing and what they looked like. So that's what we've decided to do in our study. So this is a study uh, that Dr. Sinead Dufour, who's a researcher who also has become a pelvic floor therapist over the last three or four years, and myself, uh, completed through McMaster University. It's submitted for publication at this point. It took us about two years to complete. It was uh, a study of love because we got no funding uh, to do it. We, just, we did it um, completely on volunteer basis uh, with our, our clinical researchers. The purpose of this study was to build on that current literature base that I was just talking about to determine the prevalence of pelvic floor dysfunction in women who were referred to an orthopedic practice for low back pain. That's what we were looking at. And then we wanted to quantify that pelvic floor dysfunction, okay? It was a prospective cross-sectional study. So again, we just have to remember it. We are looking at correlation. We're not looking at causation with the study design. <clears throat> 